Hello, I'm Sally Taylor. Welcome to South Today. In tonight's programme, hundreds are flooded out of their homes. A river runs through it. Thousands of pounds worth of damage to a Grade 1 listed church in Dorset. And a Sussex charity helping to replace a Sri Lankan man's DIY tin leg. He's got a leg that's homemade, looks like something out of the Dark Ages, and can't, I can't believe that it's very comfortable. New Year, same old weather. The South has again been lashed by storm conditions. There are currently three severe flood warnings in Dorset, the only part of the entire country placed on the highest alert. They affect parts of Christchurch, Portland and Weymouth. At Hearn in Dorset, 25 millimetres, that's around an inch, of rain has fallen in the last 24 hours. And wind gusts of 81 miles an hour have been recorded at the Needles. Let's join Ed Sherry. He's in Christchurch for us tonight. Ed. So there could be still more problems to come. Back to you. Ed, thank you. Well, a Grade 1 listed church near Dorchester has been badly damaged after a neighbouring river burst its banks. St Mary the Virgin Church in Charminster was flooded partly because a nearby bridge couldn't cope with the volume of water. Parishioners are angry that the bridge can't be modified for higher water flows because it's listed. James Ingham has the story. James Ingham, BBC South Today, Charminster. There's been considerable damage caused by heavy rain and rising waters in parts of Surrey and Berkshire. People living near the River Thames in Wargrave say it's the worst flooding. And they... detailed weather forecast coming up later in the programme with Alexis, so stay with us for that. Now, you'll remember the Prime Minister came in to see us last week at South Today, and one of the people he met on that trip to Southampton has caused a storm online and in the papers. Sharon Ray has bought a new flat through the Help to Buy scheme. Downing Street invited the cameras to film in her new flat. David Cameron described her as a estate agent selling the flat, still married, and that she'd boasted on Twitter that she'd bought a brand new convertible BMW. Our political editor, Peter Hanley, was the reporter with the Prime Minister at the flat that day, so he's here now. Uh, we've well, sold a pup, I mean, is this a case of too much spin to sell a political policy? It might look like that, and many of the comments online, people are furious with this, saying it's a con. OK, Peter, thank you very much for that. Still to come in this evening south today, in sport, the FA Cup results can prove just too much for some. Charity fundraisers are being urged to make sure they take proper precautions to avoid being targeted by internet scammers. One Bournemouth family set up a website to raise money for an operation for their disabled son but soon found eight fake websites in America raising money in his name and siphoning off donations made by unsuspecting well-wishers. Katie Austin has the story. Katie Austin, BBC South Today. People living in the Hampshire town of Yateley are being asked whether or not the local cemetery should allow decorations and ornaments to be left on graves. Heathland Cemetery is officially meant to be laid to lawn with plain headstones, but some families have embellished the graves of loved ones. For the second time in two years, the town council is attempting to clarify the rules on an issue which divides opinion. Chrissy Sturt has more. Chrissy Sturt, BBC South Today in Yateley. There are warnings that Portsmouth's Queen Alexandra Hospital is under intense pressure following the festive period. More than 300 people turned up to A&E on New Year's Day alone, exceeding capacity by 10%. There's also been a big influx of elderly patients. The final days of the historic Jackson's department store in Reading. I remember it well. On to sport now. Tony Husband is here. A couple of, what, heartwarming stories, yeah, really? Well, football stories from the weekend. FA Cup third round weekend, and that's what brings the romantics out in football because we <laughs> think about giant killing and all these things. But actually, two uh, different types of story tonight, both equally uh, very good. We'll tell you about the poor West Ham fan in a oh, moment. Yes. But Bournemouth, what about this? They were playing Burton Albion, and about an hour and a half before the game, uh, the match is postponed because of the heavy rain across the south coast. Dean Court's underwater. So, a Bournemouth fan has a great idea. Let's pay for the travel for the Burton fans to come back again. Oh, that's and wonderful. it's just really worked for him. David Whitehead's idea quickly spread. By Sunday night, he'd raised almost £3,000. Now, Dean Court was still showing the effects of the heavy rain today. Mm -hmm. Then at the end. <laughs> there we go.
I'm just glad it stopped oh, good at five. Old Callum, well done. What if done. it got six and seven nil? Who a, knows? Oh, poor Callum. Defeats, I feel really sorry for him. They can really hurt you, you know. I 1984 know. FA Cup semi final and Plymouth lost against Watford. I'm still getting over it. What, still yeah. now? Oh, absolutely. It never leaves you. But Callum, Callum they Callum have got a semi final, though. <laughs> Caps have won Cup. I think they're in the semi final for that okay. West Ham. So he, he might, might be, be celebrating happier. again just yeah, later this week. Yeah, he might be happy. He might mm. be happy. In fact, uh, you might be feeling a little down, rather like Callum. Uh, or perhaps it was your first day back at work. The weather's rubbish, let's face it. And the New Year's resolutions are testing your resolve. Mine are. So here's an uplifting story for you about a Sri Lankan tea farmer called Lakshman who lost his leg in an accident. For more than a decade, Lakshman's been getting around on a false limb he fashioned out of tin. That's right, a homemade metal leg because he couldn't afford a proper prosthetic. Now a charity run from West Sussex has decided he needs an upgrade. Rob Powell has the story. It certainly does put things into perspective for you, doesn't yeah, it? And we wish uh, Lakshman all the best and hopefully the charity can uh, help him. Let's move on to the weather because I know you're all waiting for the forecast to find out exactly how bad it is going to be. Alexis? Yes. We're not out of the woods until around midweek onwards when we start to see the high pressure finally build in, turning it more settled. Let's take a look at your weather pictures, though. Barry Goble took this picture of the crashing waves and the high tide at Worthing today. And Biggins captured the uh, flood water, that's <laughs> everywhere, isn't it, from the River Avon in Fordingbridge Park. And Harnham Water Meadows and the Cathedral Close, taken from Salisbury Cathedral Tower, and that was from Chris White. So more rain on the cards through the course of tonight in the form of torrential showers, and the Met Office have issued a yellow weather warning for that. That's valid through the course of tonight and more through More rain day. Wednesday night into Thursday, but high pressure builds Thursday onwards. Sally. Lexi, thanks very much. We were watching that, um, you know, snow in America yeah, last night. Ooh, yes. That was yeah. a bit scary too, as well. <laughs> OK, now, tomorrow night, so that sees the start of Stargazing Live on BBC Two with Professor Brian Cox and Dara O'Brien, as well as the TV show. There are live events around the country and at regional events, Event is uh, going to be in Portsmouth's historic dockyard. All the tickets, I have to say, have been allocated, but be, we, we will get you a ringside seat because we are going to be there live with Alex Dyke in tomorrow night's programme, so make sure you're with us for that. That's it from us this evening, more at 8 and at 10.25, and I said, we're back here tomorrow at half past six. Hopefully you'll be with us as well. Good night. Thanks for watching. Good night. Good night.